No. Lorraine, leave me alone. I didn't see that coming. Whoa. <laughs> it's like this. I drew the flux capacitor. Hi, how are you? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I feel really like weirdly loopy and great. We had a live last night and it was really fun. I'm shook. We had a really long three hour plus live. I got kicked off after like 50 minutes and then we had another one that was like two hours and 15 minutes. So that's what? That's crazy. It seems like a good time. I don't know. That was so weird. Thank you so much for that. That was really fun. We talked about my movie today. So it shouldn't come as a surprise to you that today's film is back to the future. I think 1985 is shaping up to be my most favorite year in movie history, right? Like 1985 is a good ass year. I just feel like I've been seeing really great stuff from 85. Does that make sense to you? Comment below. Let me know. I think yes. Yeah, so today we are doing Back to the Future with Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. At one point in my life, I know I've seen this movie. So I cannot claim it as my first time watching it. Like, I don't know if what I remember is any plot points or if I just like remember like commercials. Like I think I know Marty McFly. I know he skateboards through like a town. I know there's some sort of time machine, the DeLorean, right? So it's like, do I know this because of pop culture? Probably. I'm super excited because it uses the same town square set as Gremlins, which is another 80s fun classic. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see what I get from this movie. I wanted to say also thank you so much, Ben Gifford, who sent me a digital copy of Back to the Future. So I didn't have to purchase it myself and I really, really appreciate that. So thank you so much. I think without further ado, let's get right into Back to the Future. Steven Spielberg? Did I know that? Spielberg produced Zemex Directed? <laughs> Pause really quick. Great, great opening shot. In terms of symbols, it's it's the most perfect opening shot ever. What do you want as your the first thing you see in a movie about time travel? clock. I almost have chills thinking about just that decision alone. Now it's to the discrepancy to a simple clerical. Bird toast. I can't wait to see this kooky dude. I just cannot wait to see this guy. Stop. Is it the reveal? Oh, oh they're gonna reveal God. our man. Stolen by Doc, that plutonium. Such fun. I can roll. What a charismatic dude. Oh, the soundtrack just gets ya. Oh, the 80s, man. This looks like Cali, California. So cool. So cool. Just the coolest. So Doc, I might understand you're still hanging around with Dr. Emmett Brown McFly. Great. Great way to slip in the exposition. This is hanging out with him is dangerous. He's blah blah blah. Why even bother, McFly? You don't have a chance. You're too much like your own man. Never amounted to anything in the history of Hill Valley. This is fucked. Can you say this to a student and get this close? Change. Marty's a rock star in this? Maybe I haven't seen this. <laughs> Comment below if Michael J. Fox was your everything growing up. <laughs> Please. They're amazing. Are you f***ing serious? Sabotage. That was absolute sabotage. Okay, back her up. Someday, Jennifer. Wouldn't it be great? Take that truck up to the lake, throw a couple of sleeping bags in the back, lie out underneath the stars. For my mother would freak out if she knew I was going up there with you when I get the standard lecture about... Foreshadowing. Save the clock tower. Save the clock... Clock motif. This is astonishing. I love this. The first like 20 or so minutes of any movie is like you're getting to know the character in their world. Like what is their status quo? What is their business as usual? What is their like homeostasis? Like where just things are as they are. This is astonishing. It's like we have so many irons in the fire in the best ways possible. That scene, the blocking choice was so cool. They could have just said that standing on the ground, but he 
takes her up on the bench. It just gives them something to do and it's interesting for the camera and it's interesting for the frame. We haven't cut yet. They sit on the back of the bench and connect. Yeah, everything is so deliberate and I love it. Own your car without telling me it had a blind spot. I could have been killed. <laughs> now, now, Biff, now, I know. Oh, that's Biff? Me, roll up when that car smashed into me. Who's gonna pay my cleaning bill? Ah. Uh, and uh, where's my report? Gas lighter. Uh, well, uh, Finchos reports on up tonight, and I'll. Michael J. Fox has gotta be teeny. Tomorrow. He's gotta be like 5'9. Right. Shoes on tight. <laughs> Don't be so gullible, McFly. Like Gaslighters love to call people gullible. Have you noticed? Personal experience. Butthead. Butthead. I'm sorry. Believe me, Mom. Dad looks young. By ourselves. Your Uncle Joey didn't make parole again. There is so much McFly backstory. Is Mom okay? Is Mom a drunk? Girls chasing boys. When I was your age, I never chased a boy or called a boy. Likely f***ing story, bitch. Car car with a boy. If Grandpa hadn't hit him, then none of you would have been born. I was gonna spend the rest of my life with him. They have lost their spark. They are making it such a point to show how stuck these people are. But they still rem remember their past so fondly. Michael J. Fox choosing to sleep like that. <laughs> I love a strong actor choice. You guys see all that wet pavement? Why is it wet? More cinematic. This is it? This is it? Out of time. Ugh. I feel like I saw this at Universal Studios Florida. Trademark. Doc! Chris! I hope the doggy's strapped in. What did I tell you? 88 miles! Zero seconds! Temporal displacement. Jesus Time travel. I love this. It, this whole thing's playing in a two shot, so you can see everything. You can see both reactions. The fire, the smoke. And we haven't cut yet. All in real time. This is wild. Is he gonna be a puppy or something? This clock is exactly one minute behind mine and still ticking! That was the day I invented time travel. I remember it vividly. 1.21 gigawatts of electricity I need. Doc, you don't just walk into a... Are gigawatts a thing? Those giga. This is dangerous. <laughs> be careful. Pro great props department. Some colored water, a little test tube action. Some, some regular water. Is that what plutonium looks like? If you know, let me know. Comment below. No! Bastard! Doc's dead? Oh my god, what? If he hits 88. Jeez. I have goosebumps. I really do have goosebumps. He doesn't have extra plutonium! By the way, this soundtrack, this score is so Spielbergian. Ah! Marty! Ah! That's how we get. That's how he does. That's it? That's how he gets to the past? I didn't see that coming. Whoa! I feel really emotional. That was so cool. I feel really emotional about that. I really thought he had to like go save Doc. Like I thought Doc goes in the past and then Marty has to go get him. Brilliant writing, they tricked me. <sighs> I feel like I'm 12. <laughs> Doc remembers when this whole section was farmland. Remember he said that? You're like, yeah, I remember Chanel. <laughs> Mr. Sandman? I love Mr. Sandman in the movies. 
This was just an Uncle Buck, painting the era perfectly for me. This is a feast for my eyes. The clockworks! What do you think Biff. you're doing? My homework and your hand. Marty, your dad's what a you nerd. You wouldn't want that to happen, would you? You went here okay. again. <laughs> All right, bye. What's with that kid's like 3D glasses? Are they like decoder glasses for like a comic book or something? Yeah, I'm gonna... That's the mayor, the mayor on the side of the car. Whoa, Marty, no. Just look away, Marty. Wow, I love what this director chooses to put in the frame. He frames things in wide shots so we get all the characters in frame at once so that they can just do their business and the frame is just set. Like, I love this. 1955. Mom! You're my mom. You're my mom. My name is Lorraine. Lorraine Bates? Yeah. I've been coming here to dinner. He... Now, you already know Lorraine. His grandfather hit Marty. Rerun. You'll find out. He's like, I saw it on TiVo. Well, with Marty's parents out of town, don't you think he ought to spend the night? This horny bitch. Did Marty ruin history by getting hit instead of his father getting hit? Doc? Don't say a word. Doc, I don't want to know your name. I... Do you know what this means? It means that this damn thing doesn't work at all. This. <laughs> and that's when he came up with the idea for the flux capacitor, which is what makes time travel possible. You guys know what the flux capacitor is, right? You probably, maybe you may or may not have heard this term before, the MacGuffin. The best way I know how to explain the MacGuffin, or the way I love and the way it was explained to me, is the MacGuffin means absolutely everything in the world of the characters. The flux capacitor means everything to them, but it means almost nothing to us. It's an object or objective driving the action of a movie. Does that make sense? And it's um, a plot device. It moves plot forward. We need the plutonium for the flux capacitor. Never mind that, never mind that now, never mind that, never mind. Why, that's me! Look at me! I was I'm wondering if he got the tape no, back to the future, back to the past, no, to the past. Hair. What on earth is this thing I'm wearing? But all we need is a little plutonium. Oh, I'm sure that in 1985, plutonium is available in every corner drugstore, but in 1955, it's a little hard to come by. It says here, that a bolt of lightning is going to strike the clock tower precisely 10.04 p.m. <gasps> next Saturday night! Is that when the clock stopped working? Next Saturday night, we're sending you back to the future! Okay, all right, Saturday's good, Saturday's good. I can spend a week in 1955. Did you look into the camera for Back to the Future? Doc, she didn't even look at him. This is more serious than I thought. Apparently your mother is amorously infatuated with you instead of your father. This is another one of those wide shots where they, they just come and go in and out of frame. Long take. Wow. Wow. Of course, each member of the scene is supposed to go to this. That's where they kiss for the first time. All right, kid. You stick to your father like glue and make sure he takes you to the dance. Wow, that was a long take. We hadn't cut that whole time. Biff. I hate Biff. You know you want Shut your filthy mouth. I'm not that kind of girl. So why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? Make like a tree and get out of here? Van Halen. <laughs> Why? My name is Darth Vader. Ha <laughs> ha Darth Vader. Lou, give me a milk. Chocolate. <laughs> give me a milk. It's a board with wheels. It's an absolute dream. Come on, come on, come on. Marty McFly is like gonna in, is responsible for inventing so many things in this world. Star Wars, Star Trek, skateboards, spaceships. This is so cool. Oh, 
Who name? knows when he's gonna die? That? Excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale. <laughs> Excuse the crudity. Okay, it's perfect. We run contact, thereby sending 1.21 gigawatts into the flux capacitor and sending you back to 1985. <gasps> oh, shit. What'd she say? She said cows and climb. Marty. Well, All right. uh, Leave me alone. You know I'm going to be picking a fight, Dad. Dad, Dad, Daddy O, they're coming to a rescue. Daddy O. Okay, let's George. Nice girls get angry when uh, guys take advantage of them. No. Oh, you mean you're gonna go touch her on her? No, no. Ash, he's holding a bra. What? Amazing. I'm really gonna miss you, Marty. I'm really gonna miss you. Doc, about the future. No, Marty. On the night that I go back in time, you will be. Shot by terrorists. Doc is going to be wearing a bulletproof vest, and he's not going to be dead. Your friend. Official guess. Marty. Create penmanship. Love it. Gorgeous. Park. For a while. That's a great idea. I'd like. It's not like I've never parked before. I swiped it from the old lady's liquor cabinet. Yeah, well. Mom. You drink. Why not? Do you smoke too? Party, you're beginning to sound just like my mother. <laughs> so cute. No, no. Reject her. But when I kiss you, it's like I'm kissing my brother, family. My brother. Thank oh, God. Yeah. Our human biology kicks in and is yeah, like, not says. your son. Take him in back, all right? I'll be right there. <laughs> Admit. <laughs> Come on. Come on. This ain't no peak show. Evil. Yes. I'm the fly and walk George, away. beat the out of hand. Are you deaf? Punch him, George. <laughs> oh, I hate it when characters don't do what I want. <sighs> Who is that guy? It's George McFly. Oh, come on, sis. I'm on the dance floor, and if there's no music, they can't dance. If they can't dance, they can't kiss. If they can't kiss, they can't fall in love, and I'm history. Hey, man, dance is over. Unless uh, you know somebody else that can play the guitar. Marty! Brilliant! Yes! Earth Angel. Earth Angel. Fly, cut in. George! <laughs> go to her! George! I can't even watch. Jesus. Excuse me. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, is he gonna do like an eighties like only? rock concert? Oh, I uh -huh. love. He also wrote Go Johnny Go in this world. Obsessed. <laughs> Only one thing left to do, my friends. Get back to the future. Damn, where's the kid? Damn, damn. damn. <laughs> Let's send you back at exactly the same time. How about five minutes sooner? When this alarm goes off, you hit the gas! Right! I'm putting myself in Marty's shoes right now. I'd be so scared. What if I don't get enough speed? What if I get too much speed? What if it doesn't work? The hook at precisely 88 miles an hour. The instant the lightning strikes the tower, everything will be fine. Ugh, right. that's so much coordination. I'm scared. Me pretending like it's not going to work out. Okay, Shan. I refuse to accept the responsibility! In that case, <sighs> I'll tell you straight out! Oh no. Does he have a ladder? Stressed out. Uh, come on, Duck. You got it, bro. Come on, come on, come on. 
Thank you. Haha, <laughs> short! What? <laughs> really? <sighs> this is really pissing me off. Come on! Go! <laughs> wow, about time he did that. Now go do the other one, bitch. A little zipline action. Thank you. Well, that could have been bad, right? Rated movie theater right there. The bad guys. I can't go through this again. I love this. Proof, bulletproof vest, bulletproof vest. Bulletproof vest, bulletproof vest. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Proof vest. He got it. That's warm and fuzzy. Craig called you just a little while ago. No, which one was it, Craig or Craig? I don't know. I can't keep up with all of your boyfriends. Mm. Hey. I always wear a suit to the office. Wow, his dad's not a nerd anymore. Is that John Slattery? Dad. Oh, those are mom. That's mom and dad. I thought that John Slattery guy was dad. Mom isn't a sad Morning, drunk. Morning, mom. The house is beautiful. Oh, my, oh, I sure like her, Marty. <gasps> mom likes the girl. Biff, I want to make sure that we get two coats of wax this time, not just one. Yes. Just finish up the second. That is a satisfying ending. Satisfying. If it wasn't for him. We never would have fallen in love. That's right. Mr. Like I've always told you, you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. It's his. <clears throat> How about a ride, mister? Jennifer. He's like, thank God it's not my mom. <laughs> Doc. You've got to come back with me. Where? Back to the future. I didn't realize they set up the sequel like that so well. Well, we're going, we don't need roads. Fly. And Jennifer just goes. She's like, okay, I trust you. Jeez. Whoa. That was wild. Back to the Future from 1985. I'm trying to, I'm trying to like not use hyperbole. It is at least 75% better than I even thought it would be. And I thought it would be a slam dunk. They did such a good job. They did such a good job with that script. That is a beautiful, beautiful script. So much information layered in there in such an organic way, especially up top where we talked about the exposition. It is so well done. Everything comes back around town, everything. The clock, down to Marty being a like loving rock music. The teacher being to Marty, the teacher being to Marty's dad. We saw where that came from. Just absolutely everything came back around town and those are my exact favorite kind of scripts. Everything is very deliberately placed and then everything is very deliberately tied up and I loved it. I have written Marty McFly is so cool. That was just such 
like a luscious watch. I, I felt satiated. I felt like I wanted a feast and I got a feast. Like if I would have seen this in theaters, it would have been the most satisfying watch across space and time. Um, and my favorite thing to ask is, did you see this in theaters when it came out and what did you think? Because I think this would have been my favorite movie of all time. This blew my mind. Let's get into the trivia because it's my favorite thing. You can rest assured the rights to the film and its sequels are owned by Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale. In a 2015 interview, Zemeckis maintained no reboot or remake of the film would be authorized during his or Gail's lifetime. Score one for the originators. Gail and Zemmix actually received a fan letter from John DeLorean after the film's release thanking them for immortalizing his car. That's cool. There is a DeLorean documentary. The film is called Framing John DeLorean. After the film's release, body kits were made for DeLoreans to make them look like the time machine. I'd get one. Comment below if you would. Bitch catch... Bitch? I just called him Biff's catchphrases. So why don't you make like a tree? And get out of here. And but butthead. Were improvised by Thomas F. Wilson. I didn't get Mick like a tree and get out of here. According to Bob Gale, on October 26, 1985, a group of people showed up at the mall used to film the twin used to film the Twin Pines mall location to see if Marty would arrive in the DeLorean. He of course did not. That's cool. That reminds me of like being 11 and waiting for my Hogwarts letter. The inspiration for the film largely stems from Bob Gale discovering his father's high school yearbook and wondering whether he would have been friends with his father as a teenager. I knew Fox was really little. Doc's distinctive hunched over look developed when filmmakers realized the extreme difference in height between Christopher Lloyd and Michael J. Fox. Fox is 5'4 and a half. I knew it. He's a teeny guy. While Lloyd is 6'1. To compensate for the height difference, Robert Zemmicks used specific blocking where the two often stood far apart at different camera depths for close-ups. Lloyd would have to hunch over to appear in frame with Fox. Same approach would be used for the sequels. Yes! Do you remember we would talk about those wide shots? That was largely to accommodate their height difference. That's so cool. Top grossing release of 1985. So Michael J. Fox was working on this simultaneously with Family Ties. Every day during production, he drove straight to the movie set after taping the show, was finished every day, and averaged about five hours of sleep. The bulk of the production was filmed from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., a lot of nighttime shoots, with daylight scenes filmed on weekends. Oh wow, they tricked me. I thought Michael J. Fox did his own singing. Musician Mark Campbell did Michael J. Fox's singing and is credited as Marty McFly. I knew it, yeah, so the parents were in old age makeup, we knew that, very easy to clock. It took three hours in makeup to turn the 23-year-old Lim Leah Thompson to the 47-year-old Lorraine. I couldn't agree more. The University of Southern California Film School's writing classes used the screenplay for Back to the Future as the model for the perfect screenplay. Yep. Yep, it's flawless. It's very tight. It is almost too tight. It's like so tight that you could write books and textbooks about it and you would never have to make any concessions for like a point where they broke the rules. Reshooting Stoltz's scenes added three million to the budget. So they shot this movie with a different Marty McFly, Eric Stoltz, for six whole weeks. Whoa, oh wow, we need to look this up. According, although Eric Stoltz's scenes were reshot with Michael J. Fox, in two instances, Stoltz remained. During one scene in the 1950s diner, there is a close-up of Biff's face as Marty launches a punch at him. This was not reshot. We need to look at that. So that as well as Stoltz's hand and arm, his head is also visible to the left of the screen for a few frames. Wow, if we slow it down, we might be able to catch it. This is so cool. We have to find this outtake. While filming the parking scene with Marty and young Lorraine in the car, the production crew decided to play a practical joke on Michael J. Fox. He was supposed to drink prop liquor, but the bottle was switched out for one that contained real alcohol inside. A full gag is featured on the outtake section of the DVD. The cliffhanger ending of the film was not originally intended to set up a sequel, but rather just to be one last joke. The ending would not have had Jennifer get into the car with Doc and Marty. Yeah, so it was supposed to just be one last joke, and they were saying that if they were to set up a sequel, they wouldn't have had Jennifer get in, which is very funny. Huey Lewis was asked by Robert Zemmicks and Bob Gale to write a song. After viewing a cut of the film, Huey got the inspiration for Back in Time. That played at the end, didn't <sighs> A marketer hoped to get a prominent placement for California raisins somewhere in the film. Bob Gale informed him that a bowl of raisins would photograph like a bowl of dirt. The only thing that appears in the film is Marty jumping over red, sleeping on a bench that is advertising California Raisins. Unhappy with their product placement, the California Raisins representative complained to the producers and had their $5,000 refunded. Eric Stoltz insisted that the casting crew address him as Marty even when the cameras weren't rolling. I have this weird like jealousy for method actors. I'm like, I wish I could be like you because I think it's astonishing and I think it, it's, if you were an actor and you needed to protect your energy and you needed to protect your performance, the smartest thing you could do is never get out of character. Yeah, I definitely don't have the confidence to go method, to just remain in character at all times. But the actors who do do it turn in really astonishing work and they're usually hated. 
um, by their co-stars. Hmm. In the Spanish translation, Marty is called Levi Strauss in 1955. That's funny. The... I just wrote satisfying and I underlined it three times and on the third underline I ripped the page. Oh, this is crazy. Bob Gale confirmed that for wide shots, the wind during the storm at the clock tower was created by using a McBride, which is described by the writer as basically an airplane engine on a huge cherry picker. It was placed 50 feet away from the actors. The McBride was so loud that all the dialogue said by Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd had to be re-recorded later. However, the McBride also had an effect on Fox's health. While filming the, filming the sequence where Marty yells up at Doc at the clock tower to tell him about the future, he coughed up blood. And then let's just go to budget. I don't know, I say this is a $30 million movie. $19 million estimated budget, and <laughs> the cumulative world gross was $381 million. So, they did alright for themselves. I could go on for absolutely ever on the trivia for Back to the Future. I'm sure you're going to tell me something I don't know. Um, if you're interested in more trivia for Back to the Future, go hit up the IMDb trivia page. It is, it's my favorite kind of page where you're just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Thank you so much for joining me here today in my childhood bedroom. I will see you here in a few days where we will do another one of these and my hair will be fixed. It will not be this blotchy. So I know you're excited. And uh, on that note, I'm gonna go eat a snack.